What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome new extension for orienting objects along paths and things like that inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Orienter Express is an add-on that was just recently released from Alejandro Soriano. And basically what this tool does is it gives you a series of tools for aligning and orienting groups along edges. So um, this can be super helpful specifically because it gives you the ability ability to not only orient objects along edges like individually, but it'll also duplicate those objects so that you can create copies that align with objects in SketchUp really quickly. So this could be a huge time saver for a lot of different applications. But for now, let's jump over into SketchUp and take a look at the way that it works. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've installed and enabled Orienter Express. You can do that through the 3D warehouse and then in your extension manager, just make sure that you've got um, Orienter Express um, enabled. But um, when you first open it up, you're gonna have these five different options in here for different ways that you can orient objects in SketchUp. Now, one thing you do need to have a basic understanding of in order for this to really do what you want, is you need to understand the way that the axes work and specifically the way that object axes work. Right, so basically you've got the X, Y, and Z axes, right? So you've got your vertical and then your two horizontal axes. So the ver the horizontal axes are the X and Y. The vertical or the blue direction is the Z. That is going to be the one that we're gonna be worried about with this tool. And so basically what this does is all of these different tools use the Z axis as the tool along which things are going to be placed and aligned and scaled. And so what that means is let's say we have an object like this one and I double click in here and remember that every object or group of geometry inside of SketchUp has its own set of axes. Well, in this case, this object has the Z axes going upward like this. And so the issue with that is that it doesn't really align with the direction that we would want objects to align inside of uh, SketchUp using this tool. So basically, if I was to activate this tool and then pick one of these tools, notice how you're gonna get this kind of like weird alignment, right? But when you think about it, it's not really weird. What it's doing is it's taking the object blue axis and it's aligning it with the edge that you have selected. So um, what you wanna do is whatever direction you want an object to be aligned to, you're going to want to come in here and you're gonna to want to use the axis tool in order to adjust that. So in this situation, right, if I want this to be centered on an object, probably what I would do is I would generate the axes like this, but then I would set this so that the blue axis is facing in this direction, right? So object axis placement is going to be really important. But now let's take a look at the tools that are in here. So um, the first two are um, pretty cool tools. Basically the way that they work is the first one is the origin placement. And so the origin placement is basically gonna take your object and it's going to align it to whatever you have selected in here using that object origin and then an end point. And so the way this tool works is you wanna make sure that you select both the edges and the group or component that you wanna copy along this if you want this to work. Um, so you just wanna select them all. But when I run this, notice what this is gonna do is this is going to take a number of copies of this object and it's going to place them aligned with this path right here. So you can use this in order to align objects to paths really quickly. And one of the powerful things about this tool is it is creating copies in here. So it's not just taking one object and aligning it, it's saying, okay, I see that you have multiple different paths. Each one of these gets a copy of the object aligned along it. Now, the second option is really similar and we're going to want to probably use this one because I've set the axes up properly. But what this one is going to do is it's gonna do something very similar but instead of placing it along the end point of an object, it's going to find the midpoint of the edge that you have selected. So if I select this, like this and run it, and so this is going to take the object and it's going to center it along the midpoint right here. Now, one thing to note about that is note that this is putting a placement point in here for your midpoint and it's doing it based on the bounding box center 
rather than where your axes are located, which is really cool because for this object, right? I mean, generally, if you're gonna use this, you want this centered on um, the center of a line. Well, you don't want it to put it in here based on your axis location, which is on the end, you want it to be in the middle. But what it does is it comes in here and it uses the center of the bounding box in order to place these along the path like this. And so one really practical use I could see for this is let's say that you've got an object like this one, which is basically a profile that you want to extrude along an object. Instead of coming in here and trying to like align it manually and all of that. So what you can do instead is you can just select the object. Notice that this is a group or in this case a component, but then you can also select the path that you want to align it to. You just use this tool in order to do that. And so notice how this placed this out in space. So the reason it placed it out in space is because we didn't take a look at where the model axes are, right? In this case, we would want the model axes to be like right on the end right here. And we're gonna say yes. And then if we run this, right? So we're gonna select these two, select this object. And it was a little hard to see, but it actually placed it over here on the end because it's looking at um, this end as kind of the start point of that object. But now if I was to take that profile and I was to push pull it, notice how it's aligned with the surface right here inside of SketchUp. So you can use it to align objects like this one really easily. Note that this did extrude this over here as well because this is a component. If you didn't want that, then you would just wanna create this as a group. But let's move on to the next one, which is actually um, one of my favorite functions that's in here. So this one, what it does is it takes your object, it places it or it aligns it with the edge, and then it scales it to match that object length. So basically the way this works, and I'm gonna show you the wrong way first, um, but you would select this and then select all these in here. You wanna make sure that you've set up that Z axis for this to work because this is going to scale your object to a line based on that Z axis, right? So if I double click in here, notice how I've got my Z axis facing the wrong way. On this one, I've got the Z axis centered and I've got it facing this way. So it's going to scale in the proper dire direction. But now if I select this and I do that scale using this Z axis scaling, what it's gonna do is it's going to scale your object, the length of these edges, which is really powerful as long as you have kind of a symmetrical shape like this or a shape that if you scale it in this direction, it's not going to cause distortion, right? So we could do the same thing with like this L angle right here. So you can use it to extrude those or uh, scale those along those paths. You could do the same thing with like a pipe or a tube as well. So notice how again, it's scaling it along that Z axis. And so you maintain the object proportions when you do this. All right, so next up, and we're gonna use a really simple example, um, just a low poly tree from SketchUp in the warehouse. But this next tool, instead of scaling along the Z axis, it scales uniformly. And so what that means is that means that you can take this and you can have it scale an object based on the length of the object, right? So if I click on this and I run this tool with the uniform scaling, notice how it scales each one of these uniformly to the length of the edge, but it maintains those uh, proportions in here so that it's not a, so it's not giving you that distortion of your object. So um, you can use this in order to really quickly create a number of different copies that kind of like match a length um, without just scaling along one axis, you can scale along um, or you can scale uniformly instead. All right, and so this last one is interesting. So basically what this one does is it gives you the ability to place object on objects on vertices um, inside of a space. So vertices, right, are basically like the endpoints of your lines or your edges in here. So in this case, if I was to select this, so we'll go ahead and do a top-down selection right here. But if I was to select this row and then select one of these tubes and then click on this, it's going to place these based on that selection in here. And so axis location just doesn't really seem to matter on this one. So if I double click in here, right, notice how this one has a different um, axis or origin than the other one. But if I select just some surfaces in here, just really quick um, like this, and run it. Notice how it still places them based on the central point 
of that object. So the bounds of the object seem to make the difference. And then in addition, if I was to try to run this on the top and select this object, notice how these get placed laying down. So, um, and let's see, that doesn't really seem to have anything to do with the Z axis direction. It seems to have, it seems to matter just based on how the object is oriented in the 3D space. Now, that being said, there are some workarounds to that. So for example, if I was to make an object a component, right, like this one, so I'm gonna create a component right here, and then I run this, well now, if I was to come in here and select the object and move it, notice how you can kind of move it off of um, that object origin after the fact. Um, now that's not an ideal solution, but if you do need a little bit of control over the way those are placed in here, you can definitely do this. But this is a super valuable tool if you wanna do something a little bit simpler, right? Like if you select um, edges right here and then you select this sphere, which I think this sphere is gonna to have to be grouped. But if I select these vertices, and run this, notice how you can use it in order to place objects on those vertices really quickly. So I will definitely be adding this tool to my toolbox just from an efficiency standpoint. It's one of the better tools I've seen for aligning things inside of a 3D model. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.